Welcome back. Uh, in the previous video I talked about how to develop the expression of the decision function d of x and we developed something like that. So this was our decision function. This is d of x equal to w dotted with x uh, plus b. So of course I can set this as xi. Uh, this is also as xi. Now the eighth training data point. This is x. And W represents the orientation of the decision line and B, the position of the decision line given this orientation. Now, I will talk about the main idea, but uh, of course this main idea assumes that the data is linearly separable. This is my assumption. So the assumption is, assumption is that or uh, the training data, the training data is linearly separable. And the meaning of this is that we can separate the training data just with a line. Now, um, uh, let me just picture here or draw a given sample, uh, a given you know, distribution of training data, so I consider that I have here four positive samples and also four negative samples. Now, uh, what I need to do is to find the line that separates this data here such that the margin is maximized and the decision line or the line that represents my decision should be in the middle of this <coughs> sorry in the middle of this margin right so the first thing that i want to do is to maximize the margin maximize the margin uh, or the width of the margin right so this is the first thing i want to do and now we need to understand what is this margin that i'm talking about well to understand what is the margin let's consider a given uh, vector w this is the vector w this is the vector w and what is the margin well first of all let me extend a line that passes from this vector now what I need to do is to consider a line that is perpendicular to this line I don't know if it's you know if you can see it on the camera so this is the line that I'm considering. So I need to consider a, a line that is perpendicular on this line here that passes from W, right? And I should um, shift it until I pass from the first positive training sample, right? So in that case, once I pass from the first positive training sample, I draw a um, a, a line that is perpendicular on this line here. So let me just use my ruler to get a more accurate result. So this is the first line of the margin. And I do the same thing for the negative samples. So in that case, I would get a line that passes from this sample right here. This is the second line. Now, these two lines here represent what we call the margin. So this is the margin, and this is the width of the margin. Let me denote this D. So D is the width of the margin. And I'm choosing here D instead of W, just not to confuse it with, uh, with this W that we have here, right? So D is the width of the margin. Now this is the margin that I'm talking about and I want to find W that would maximize the margin, right? So this is the margin that I'm talking about. Now, the next step is to fix B, is to find B. What is B? Is just the position of the decision boundary given uh, an orientation W. Now, what I know is that my decision boundary should be in between these two lines or in between this margin so we can have several possibilities I can get you know a decision boundary here 
or a decision boundary here, or a decision boundary here. Now let's consider, uh, just let's consider a decision boundary here. Let's say that my decision boundary is here. Say that this is, for example, my decision boundary. So in that case, let me call this D1. So this is the first decision boundary, just to differentiate it from other decision boundaries. So D1 here, this is my decision boundary, and if I get a new sample to classify, an unknown sample to classify, say a sample here, for example, so this, or rather, let me consider it here. Just forget about this thing here. So let's say that I have a sample that is unknown here. So based on this decision boundary, this would be classified as a negative sample. And this does not make sense because this sample here is closer to the positive class than the negative class, right? So normally this should have been classified as a positive class instead of negative class. And all of this is because, you know, D1 is closer to the to this line here, to this margin, to the line of the margin here, to this side of the margin rather than this side of the margin. And a similar problem would occur if I have D1 closer to this side of the margin than this side of the margin. So the best decision that I would do is to choose D, so I need to choose B, rather, I need to choose uh, B, or normally I think this, this is normally written as, well, it's B, this is B. We need to find B that, such that the decision line or the decision boundary is in between these two margins here, these, this margin here. So it should be in between this margin, so it should be like that. This is my decision function that I want, or my decision boundary. So I need to find this decision boundary here, D of X, such that the distance here is d by 2 is d by 2 and the distance from this decision boundary to this side of the margin is also d by 2 this is d by 2 and this b is the you know the the best position of my uh, of my uh, decision boundary so this was the second objective. The first obje objective, or the first goal, was to maximize the margin, and the second is to find, find B, such that we have the best accuracy, the best accuracy. And this means, as I said, I just said that this line should be in the middle of this margin, right? So I can say instead of that, I can say find B such that, such that the decision boundary is in the middle of the margin, in the middle of the margin, right? So that's it, that's the idea. And uh, the next video I will talk about the theory uh, that uh, how we can do this theoretically, how we can find W and B, you know, such that we get this type of decision boundary, this type of classifier.